morning. Happy Easter.
O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternal death, when we pray, they we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. 
Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the pastel victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb, a sheep, redeems. Christ only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak. Mary declaring, what you saw way there, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus, resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtained. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ our pastoral lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the body of those there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the body of those there and the cloth that had covered his head not with the glory of both, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciples also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Christ is risen, truly is risen. Happy Easter, everyone. There are many symbols of Easter, and these common symbols that we that we remember and were coming to us talking about Easter, especially when we are children it is the easter bunny it is the easter egg it is the easter lily it is the easter lamb it may be the easter bread or easter food so many of those different symbols they all speak about the newness of life it is out of this shell of the egg that the little chick breaks out and it becomes the symbol of the risen Christ. It comes out of this shell of the egg as, the, as Christ comes out of the tomb. The same is with the Easter bunny. As you can go out and we may see them already coming out of this hole of the earth, these little bunnies, they come out and they symbolize as well the risen Christ. The Easter Lily that is dressed so splendorously uh, with this uh, whiteness uh, and this beauty of that shape and that form that stands again like that Christ risen. It comes out of the dirt of the earth and it springs up and brings that beauty of its flower. The Easter land is that uh, coming more from the Jewish tradition of the land that they would sacrifice for Easter. Christ is the, that land that was sacrificed for you and for me. We may know it again in the form of a, of a cake or in the, in the form of a, a chocolate uh, sweet or other sugary, sugary lamp or, or egg or bunny. Yesterday we blessed the Easter food. Back home in Poland we have this tradition of this Easter breakfast. That it would be some of those foods that were blessed on uh, Holy Saturday. Everybody would share the samples of the blessed food because it knows, as we will read more of the Gospels, talking about the uh, resurrection, we realize that Christ appearing to the disciples uh, on the shore of the sea, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? Or he was even waiting for the disciples and then they brought some fresh fish and then he shared with them the bread and the, and the fish. So all these symbols speak about this beautiful feast, the greatest feast that we celebrate in the, in the church. But it is the greatest feast because of other symbols and other reality. The empty tomb is the best of the symbols. And as we come to this empty tomb, especially in the Gospel uh, of today, uh, imagine Peter and John, when they came, it was only then that John says that he did see this empty tomb by looking to the side altar there because there we prepared, you cannot see on camera but we can see it here, we prepared the display of that empty tomb and, actually, and the risen Christ standing in front of it. But when St. John seen that uh, white cloth and that napkin in, in the separate place and he realized, you know, Christ was talking about it. He was talking that he will rise from the dead. And finally he arrived. It did sink into John's heart that it did happen. And then 
he finally so say believed that because he as well he has seen he has seen the empty tomb and the reality of it. For Peter, definitely, it was more difficult to experience that joy of Easter, the joy of that empty tomb, because Peter probably was still very much aware that actually he helped to put Jesus into the tomb when he denied him uh, three times. He let the persecution of Jesus continue and let him be so say killed. But in the denial of people, of Peter, all of us, we can find our part because uh, through our sin, we all have denied Christ. We all have pushed him towards the way of the cross. We all were the reason why he underwent what he chose to undergo for love of you and for love of me. So, that greatest symbol of, of Easter is that empty tomb. But that empty tomb comes after that, that tremendous events of Good Friday. And for us that are still living those events of Good Friday, we cannot dissociate this Easter from what we are living. So let us not be surprised that we, we don't feel the joy yet because we still suffer the consequences of Good Friday. We still are in that passion. We still didn't cross over it. We are like Peter, that we are, we feel so, we are so involved. We are involved because we know that others suffer. We are involved because maybe in your family, maybe you have already somebody who have died because of, the, of those circumstances of this year. Or maybe you have somebody who is sick. Or even if you just know of others who, who are passing through this terribly difficult time. This is why it is so difficult for us to, to perceive and to feel that joy. But in other way, we feel that profound calmness that comes from the Lord. We know that the Lord is there. He is there waiting for you and for me because we hear the stories of resurrection. Not necessarily that account of Peter and John, but we hear of people who are in that fight, in that so say good Friday of our present time. We hear of these heroic doctors and, and nurses who take care of others putting aside the fear for the concern for their own life. We hear of the people who have recovered. There was someone who uh, recovered after going into coma. The person that already went to coma, imagine, imagine the family, what they were going to think as the, as the health of the gentleman was progressing into the coma. So probably they have thought that they were going to lose him and then he came out of coma and, and he is getting better and hopefully Lord save his life and save the life of, of all those that you can, that all that you are not ready to call yet uh, home to you. Bring the healing to, to all. But again, you will say, Lord, okay, in the end it is not our will, but that your will be done. But definitely we ask you to give the experience of your risen presence to all those who are undergoing this terribly difficult time, especially those who are sick and especially those who will die. We ask that you be on their bedside that your mother be present to them as she was present to you and that she may be there as well to console the families who still will undergo the loss and who undergo the suffering of this time with having someone there in the hospital. 
So Lord, we ask that you give all of us the experience of your presence among us. And we ask that you keep coming our way, that you keep coming to, to meet us, that you keep revealing yourself to us, especially in all those difficult circumstances of those days, so that we can experience what it means for us uh, that you have risen from the dead for everyone, so that we can continue to entrust our lives uh, to you and that we can live every day of our life in that communion with you and probably now more than ever because now we realize how precious our faith is to us how precious you are to us we were precious to you because you gave your life for us and now we need to realize how precious you are for us because you are the only one who waits for us on this other side of the dark grave of our life. In this darkness of the world, it is only you who can reach out to us with the light of your resurrection. Lord, enlighten the darkness of our world and enlighten the darkness of our time. Christ is risen, truly is risen. As we make profession of our faith, let us ponder those words that we proclaim that announce to us all the wondrous work of salvation that God prepared for us from the beginning of time. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that Jesus is our merciful and compassionate King, we place our petitions before Him. Our response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole Church, especially for Pope Francis, May we all in this Easter season feel the enthusiasm of the Christians spreading the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hear our prayer. For all who have contracted the coronavirus and their caregivers, and for those who are the most vulnerable, we pray for their safety and protection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our first responders, doctors, 
nurses, health care assistants, essential workers. Inspire this team of health care warriors through our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise him, the Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, hospital administrations, clinical staff, or support staff, we ask God to take care of them while they take care of his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christian women and men witness the resurrected Christ in all they say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather to celebrate the Lord rising from the dead and who share his body and blood, recognize him in one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all those who have died this past week, and especially for those from our community. Anne Joseph, Grace Martini, Baby Lucas Gomez, Dominic Arapola, Manuel Garcia, Paul Vigo, Paul Boyle, Camilo Oviedo Garcia, Carmen Cruz, Robert Olivero, Robert Costa, Alice Fernandez, and Frank Franco, and for all the others who have died. And especially as well for those who are whose intentions we celebrate in this month for the repose of the souls of Louis Hay and Carol Kennedy. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. And let us present to the Lord all the silent intentions that we all have, that we all bring to the Lord at this Mass. For all of us here present and for all of you who are watching at home, may the Lord hear all those prayers, all those concerns, all those needs. All these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. God of glory and power, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son. Hear the prayers that we offer to you through the same Christ our Lord.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our good and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, we entrust to the Lord all of our loved ones. And all gather here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in vain their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul Andrew, James, John, Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, and Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Daniel, and all your saints. We ask that through their ways and prayers in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Gracious, the accepted oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flow of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless 
acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sign of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. We offer to the Lord all of our faithful departed, especially we offer those who have died from coronavirus. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not waiting our marriage, 
But when he went in as your partner through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through whom he went with his humanity, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
we will now celebrate an act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the announcements, I just want to remind that the church remains closed today until the last Mass, so probably at 2 o'clock it will be open again for private prayers if we are this time transmitting from the church as we uh, have to observe those rules of the social distancing and I keep inviting you just let us be even observant of this distance it's so say at home we don't have to be talking in each other space so that if anyone should have contracted the virus that we don't spread it so uh, easily to each other even if sometimes whenever we go out let's use the masks again then they, they can be homemade, they don't have to be uh, specialistic masks so that we can protect ourselves and others in this time. During the week, church is open all day. You may come and pick up your bulletin, make your private prayer. Uh, so, uh, as well, you can see uh, the bulletin on our parish website and uh, maybe check with others if they still didn't find way to access our live stream masses on Facebook or uh, YouTube. It is very simple, just you write St. Anne's Brentwood, New York, and be it on YouTube, be it on Facebook, it is going to, to come. Or when you go on our parish website, you just click, there is a simple click on that, on those uh, two sites, and it will go straight to the website so you can continue to participate. It looks like we are going to be celebrating in this way until the end of month. So let's be, so say, prepared for it. Uh, our parish, is off, parish offices, they are open by the phone. 
whatever it is that you need, call and we will see how we resolve it. So everything is done by the phone in the regular uh, office hours and uh, we find solution to, to anything and everything that needs to be done. So, so please call our parish, uh, parish phone in the office hours. The same if you need to contact uh, office, you can contact to parish email. We place as well Chris emails on the website, so you can write directly to any of the priests if you have any need or any comments. For those who are for those who are experiencing difficulty, maybe they are hungry, maybe they have no money to buy the food. If you find yourself in the difficulty, uh, feel free to come to the come to the office. You may call us, or you may come in the hours of that outreach that is open, that normally was open. It is on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 to 1 p.m. So come in those hours, and we will share with you whatever we have. We have resources, we have places where we get regular food, so whatever we have, we'll share it with you. So if you should be in need, don't hesitate to, to come. Some people were asking how they can make donations for this church in this time. You may do it in different ways. You may drop the donation in the box that is outside here in the main entrance on the side of the tabernacle. There is a box with the name on it, offering. You just can drop that offering there. You can drop it in the uh, post uh, slot in the door in the parish office. Or you can get, go online and you can give directly. You go to the parish website and there is a simple way to donate to the uh, parish to your cell phone. So it's very simple. To your cell phone texting, you will get the instruction and simply you will do the credit, debit card or your banking account, you can make a donation. Again, I wish you all happy Easter. Above all, healthy Easter. We continue to pray for everybody and especially we keep always in mind those who are affected by this coronavirus virus. We all are affected, but especially those who are sick, those who have someone sick, and even more those who have lost anyone. We keep doing our prayers, we ask your prayers, and let's stay so say united to the uh, to the means of the, the social media of the internet. So let's stay in that spiritual communion. Now we experience what we truly start to hunger for is for really for Christ. And this is what he wants us to do. He wants us to celebrate his death and resurrection until he comes. And in this time especially we, we have need for him. We have need for him to come. To come and rescue us in these difficult moments of our, of our lives. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Now I will give you the solemn blessing. Bow your hands and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and on you and remain with you forever. 
Go forth, the masses are